Me to know he'll take you through. Yes, sir. He'll Thank see you, you through. Yeah. He'll be there with you. Right. Come on down. Amen. God. God's going to show up on time. That's right. Amen. Amen. May not be our time, but God's going to show up on time. Amen. Right. That's right. Praise God. Good to see each one in the house of God to worship Him this morning. Praise yes. God. Amen. I feel the presence of God in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank we you. might as well go ahead and have church. Yes. Let God have His way this morning. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Matthew's Gospel, the 16th chapter. Verse 13. Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And I'm Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Praise God. Let's praise Him one more time. God, we love You. God, we praise You. God, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for Your Spirit. God, anoint us and use us, God, for Thy glory today. And anoint hearts and ears to receive Your Word. We'll praise You in Jesus' name. Praise God. You can be seated. For most of you, you're familiar with the story where Jesus turned to His disciples and asked them, said, who, who, who do men say that I am? And they began to say, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're, you're Elias or Jeremiah or mm -hmm. some of the other prophets. And He looked at them. He said, yeah, but whom say ye that I am? Mm -hmm. Peter spoke up and he said, well, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. It's your blessed to you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood hath revealed this unto you from my Father which is in heaven. He began to tell Peter, he said, upon this rock, upon the revelation of who I am, in other words, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then in verse 19, he said, I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. For just a little while this morning, I want to preach to you the keys to victory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. The keys to victory. Yes, sir. How many, how many want to be victorious? Yeah. How many want victory in your life? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Thank you, sir. I, I, I want to see everyone be victorious in living for God. I want to see everyone have victory in their life. You know, I get tired. I, get, I, I, I just, you know, get tired of, of, of people looking defeated and being defeated. You know, and, and, and that's that's Satan's job. The Bible said he's come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Yes. Mm. He said, "I'm come that you might have life." Life more abundant. Amen. Praise God. I like to see people with abundant life about them. Mm -hmm. He told Peter, he said, Peter, I, I, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. So Peter had the keys. And Peter had the keys to victory. Right. Victory in, in, in your life. Victory in my life. He's got the keys to victory. And, and we can, we don't have to go around defeated. We don't have to go around down and out all the time. Amen. Whether we realize, and you know it and I know it, 
if, if you've been around a while, you you know we know it. Amen. That there's people that are not here this morning simply because they let Satan defeat them. My, my, my. Huh? Bless him, Lord. But Peter had the keys to victory. And those keys were given to him <coughs> by Jesus himself. Amen. You know, lots of and you, you all know it, and I'm gonna, I'll go to, to, to a lot of familiar scriptures that you've heard me preach over and over again today. But I want you to understand you can have victory in your life today. Amen. Jesus, Jesus told them after that he was crucified and, and, and it was about to ascend back up into heaven. And he told them, he said, you go and you tarry in Jerusalem till you be in you with power from on high. And he also told them, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Yes. Praise God. If I've got power, I can be victorious. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I said, if I've got power, I can be victorious. Amen. And of course, you know, the next second chapter where, the, where the, the birth of the church, the Holy Ghost was poured out and, and, and they gathered around and to see what was going on and, and Peter uh, stood up and he began to preach to them. And, and of course, you know, it came down to finally the Bible said in, in Acts 2 and 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, why was it Peter? Because he had the keys to victory. Yes, he did. He had the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We've been, we've been uh, studying in, in our Sunday school class about the gift God has given us. But I tell you this morning, there's no greater gift that God could give you than the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking about some keys to victory. We're, we're given the keys yet so many times we don't use the keys in the Word of God that are given to us to have victory in our life. Amen, that's right. We'll push it aside and say, oh, well, you know what, that's fine for, for you, maybe. But, but I, I, I want you to understand that Peter had the keys to, to victory and he was opening the door to the kingdom of heaven with those keys on the day of Pentecost, when God had given, when, when, when the Holy Ghost had been poured out, after that He'd been given the keys. That's right. So He opened up a door to you and I into the kingdom of heaven, into a place where you and I could have victory in our life. Amen. Somebody said, "Why, why, why, why do you dwell so much?" On Acts 2.38. Because I know from experience in being obedient to what Peter told them what it done for my life. Amen. And how it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And how it works in my life. <laughs> by being obedient to what Peter told them. Somebody said, well, I, you know, I can only get so far in my walk with God and it seems like I can't go any further. <clears throat> Try being obedient to more of the Word. Right. Oh, come on now. Go into places you've never been to before in the Spirit of God Amen. and in the Kingdom of Heaven. Amen. Because Peter had the keys to the Kingdom of Heaven. Yes, yes he did. Not only that day he was preaching to those Jews that had gathered in there, we find if you go on into the book of Acts in, in Acts chapter 10 and verse 1, Acts 10 and 1, the Bible said there was a certain man called, uh, in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian man. He was a devout man. Amen. He was a good man. 
And one that feared God with all his house. Yes, it did. Which gave much alms to the people, and he prayed to God always. Mm -hmm. But you know what God wanted? He wanted to lead Cornelius further into the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it did. Further into victory. I said he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming unto him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? He said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. My, 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 my. Bless him, Lord Jesus. How many of us are devout enough to God that we know our prayers and our alms and our giving and our love Thank has come up Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. as Thank a memorial you, Jesus. before God? Amen. He said, now I'm going to tell you when it, when it does, when, 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 when the things that we do for God come up to God for a memorial before God, you know what he's going to do? He's going to increase us spiritually. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He'll increase you spiritually. He said, Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. Why, why Peter? Peter had the keys. Right. Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's right. He lodges with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. And he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Mm -hmm. See, there's something about it. God's not going to make you do anything. Yes, sir. He may make you wish you had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not going to. He, he'll, 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 he'll send word. And through the word of God and through the preaching of the word, he'll tell you what you ought to do. Amen. See. It's so strange. People want deliverance. Mm -hmm. People want victory. People want to be close to God. Amen. And you tell them what they ought to do and none of them want to listen. Bless them. Human Lord nature, Jesus. I guess. But Cornelius wanted to listen because he gathered in his whole house mm -hmm. for Peter to preach to why, Peter? He had the keys. He had the keys. That's right. He began to tell them, going on to, to verse 44 and 48 of Acts, the 10th chapter. I was saying, well, this is, this is he, he, after he is preaching or preached to the household of Cornelius. When Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Amen. And he commanded them, Mm -hmm. to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Amen. He commanded them to be baptized in the Peter, you got the keys. What? To our victory. Mm -hmm. To our victory. Somebody said, what? What's the difference? What's the difference? This, this gift of the Holy Ghost, this experience of the Holy Ghost, that's why... That's why we've got Pentecostal on our sign out front. Because Pentecostal is an experience. Yes, it is. That we believe you can receive and you can have. Not only do we believe it, we know it. Amen. And we know how it's changed our lives. I want it to change your life. Yes, sir. I want it to draw, I want it, you know, this gift to draw you closer to God. To cause you to step further into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And experience some great things in the Lord that you've never experienced before. That's right. I had a preacher tell me one time, he said, Brother Wright, he said, I know it's in there. Okay? He said, but I'm afraid of it. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 
He said, because I've never been around it. I'm afraid of it. Nothing to be afraid of. Amen. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him it's sin. The Bible says to him it's a sin. Yes, it does. What does this Holy Ghost do for you? How does it give you victory? <coughs> it, he said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Does that mean... That means if I've, if I've got victory, I'm never going to have troubles or trials, or I'm never going to have a battle and all. But I tell you what the Holy Ghost will do. He'll let you face those battles with faith. He'll let you face those battles with power. Yes, it will. He'll let you face those yes, battles with confidence that you're going to come out victorious. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Notice what Romans 14 and 17 tells us. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. Sounds like victory. Amen. And peace. <clears throat> sounds like victory. Yes, sir. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what the kingdom of God is. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. Look at Romans 15 and 13. Now the God of hope, I'm glad I serve a God of hope. Amen. Amen. I said, I'm glad I serve a God of hope. Yes, sir. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy. Jesus. Sounds like victory. Mm. And peace sounds like victory. In believing that you may abound in hope. How? Through the power Thank of the you, Holy Jesus. Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. You, Jesus. Praise God. Somebody said, why, why, do you, why do you preach so much on the Holy Ghost? I want you to embrace what God has got for you. Amen. I want you to embrace this experience. I want you to feel the excitement that I feel. I want you to feel the power that I feel. I want you to feel the peace that I have. I want you to feel the, the power of God and the Spirit of God when it starts from the top of your head and goes to the bottom of your feet and it gets to the place you can't contain yourself and it's all you got to shout to God with a voice of Christ. Yes, Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I, 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 I was telling Brother Richie, Brother Jody, you and some of you older ones will do it, about a song that's been on my mind for about a week now. And I hope, I'm hoping they'll get it together. I hope they take the, I hope they take the hint and get it together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, it, but it's a similar little song that says, Something got a hold of me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Something got a hold of me. Yes, it did. I'm glad one day something got a hold of me. <coughs> yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise and I'm glad it hadn't let go yet. Amen. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said, Brother Ryan, what he said, I'm saying don't stop short of complete victory. Right. Don't <laughs> stop short of complete victory. Look at 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. 2 Kings, the 13th chapter, verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash the king of Israel came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. He, he, you know, he, he was doing what he was told to do. He was following the instructions of the man of God. Amen. So he 
opened the window and he opened it. Then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the error of the Lord's deliverance and the error of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till they have consumed them. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. Man, he's still being obedient. He's still, you know, he's going so far with him. Amen. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed or stopped. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast, Syria till thou hast consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. We're talking about stopping short of complete victory. Come on now. Praise God. Could I, could I tell you, could I tell you repentance is good? Yes, sir. It is. Yes, sir. Repentance is good. It brings forgiveness. Amen. Huh? Amen. But don't stop that. Right. Don't stop that. Amen. Baptism is good. Because it washes you clean. Thank and it remits you, Jesus. your sins. Thank you, Jesus. It's good. It makes you feel good. Amen. Yes, sir. And you're being obedient to the Word of God. Amen. But don't stop short of complete victory. Amen. Go on and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost so you can arise and walk, as the Bible says, in the newness of life and have power to overcome. Amen. And have power to complete victory. To complete victory. Yes. All the other is good. He obeyed to the point the king said, smite the ground. He took the arrows. See, well, some... Oh. <clears throat> See, most of us in here today are willing to go just so far <laughs> before we stop. That's right. And we say, well, that's enough. When we could have complete victory, you could have complete deliverance. You just smite the ground. One, two, three. That ought to be good enough. That ought to be good enough. Amen. Come on, come on, buddy. Life. The Bible said he was wroth with him. In other words, he was angry about that. Man, you had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You should have smitten the ground five or six times, and then you would completely consume them. But now you're just going to defeat them thrice. Keys to victory? Try walking through the doors. To the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That Peter opened up with the keys that had given it, been given him by Jesus mm -hmm. Himself. Peter, you've got the keys to the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Complete victory. Complete victory. Am I going to stop with just partial victory? Am I going to start with just a little power? Am I going to start with just a little touch from God? Come on now. Or am I going to go on to complete victory? In the presence and in the kingdom of God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's stand. See, I can give you the word.